I'm Regina McCann Hess, president of Forge Wealth Management, and welcome to our Women in Wealth series. Today, we're going to talk about college dreams um, without the student debt nightmares. And a lot of this is one of those things where you call a ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So we're going to talk about that uh, and what to do uh, before your kids get to college that could help. Um, so whether your college is 18 years away or around the corner, there's actually a few steps that you can take to help your child avoid the, the massive student debt that we're seeing. Uh, if you've experienced the burden of student debt, you're actually in good company because there's more than 46 million Americans in the same boat. Uh, and student debt in the United States has swelled to a $1.75 trillion number. So no wonder it's a common conversation uh, when everyone's talking about college. That is one of the biggest things that comes up. So how do you help your child avoid the burden of student debt? Uh, how do you do it while you also still pay your own bills and save for your retirement? Are you still also paying off your own student loans? The most important thing to recognize is that there's no one size fits all solution. Everybody has a different situation. Everyone's needs are different. Um, everyone has different expenses and priorities, and that's okay. Uh, we can do what we can do um, that will hopefully help yourself. Every little bit that you can do is, is going to potentially help you. So here's where we're going to discuss some of the expenses and challenging decisions you may make when trying to save for your uh, children's ed education. So a few key points. Uh, most parents expect to share the cost of college with their children through the student loans. Also, parents need to balance saving for their child's college ed education with paying their own bills, saving for retirement, and often um, sometimes paying off their own student loans. Now, to help children avoid student debt, there are a number of options uh, parents can take, both when children are small and as college draws closer. So let's talk about saving for college versus saving for retirement. Uh, trying to save for your child's education at the expense of everything else may be unwise. First and foremost, work towards accumulating an emergency fund at at least a few months of living expenses. Um, and because that's always a good idea to prepare for a rainy day. Uh, most rule of thumb uh, for a rainy day savings account or emergency fund is three to six months of um, your household expenses. So that is the first place you start. Then you want to consider your own retirement fund. If you haven't been contributing to a retirement plan, start today. Um, you know, contributing early and often allows for compound interest to work its magic more effectively. Um, and it's always, uh, you've seen some of the research, maybe you have and I have, um, where the earlier you start, the better off you are. Uh, and if your company offers a match program to your retirement plan, make sure that you're contributing at least enough to get the full company match. Otherwise, you're just throwing mo money away. It's it's literally free money. You're leaving it on the table. So minimal minimal uh, contribution has to be whatever the match is. So if the company matches 4%, make sure you're putting 4% into your uh, retirement plan. I, I keep wanting to say 401k plan, but there's a couple different types of retirement plans out there. It may be tempting to put your child's first uh, needs first, and then forego uh, contributing to your own retirement. But you can't borrow for retirement, and you need to look out for yourself too. It's kind of like when the airline um, attendants uh, talk about the safety approach, uh, what happens in case of a, a, a landing or whatever prematurely, uh, the oxygen masks come down, and they always tell you, put it on yourself first before you try to help someone else. And that's because you need the oxygen to give yourself life before you can help someone else. And this is also the same for saving for your own retirement. You have to take care of yourself first before you can help someone else. And that is the most prudent approach is to save for both as best you can, but do not forget about yourself. Uh, saving for college versus paying off your student loans for, you know, if you're one of those people who are still juggling your own student loans, uh, first take stock of what you owe. Organize your loans by lender, size, and interest rates. 
Uh, can you consolidate your federal loans? Are you able to refinance your private student loans for a more favorable interest rate? Well, maybe in the interest rate environment we're in right now, may not work, but maybe if you did it two years ago, your interest rate, you know, is much lower if you were able to refinance at that point. And if not, you just wait until the Fed does lower the rates and the rates become a little bit more palatable. And then you look at that option as well. Now, if you work in a field that may offer federal student loan forgiveness, such as teaching or nursing, you should explore um, what you need to do to receive those benefits. I do know several teachers who were able to use that uh, federal student loan forgiveness uh, as far as their teaching, and that surely helped them take that monkey off their back. It was such a relief for them, such a relief for their families. So if you are able to apply for that, absolutely look into it and see what you have to do. Now, there are also some private companies um, that have introduced the benefit of matching whatever you contribute to your student debt per month and matching that into your 401k plan up to a certain limit. Um, that is something that is out there. Uh, it may not be as widespread as we all like to see it, but it is uh, uh, developing out, out there. So definitely when you're interviewing for a job, just ask the question. It doesn't hurt. Uh, when you are searching for your next job, this is something that you may want to consider as part of the benefit package and ask them, hey, do you have this? And if, if you don't, or is that something you're thinking about? And what's the timeline for that? Now, if none of those options apply to you, one of the most effective ways to pay down your student debt is to accelerate the per payments, even if it's just a little bit like, you know, hey, I'm paying $100 a month and, you know, a lot of it's going to interest. Well, what if I bump it up to $125 a month? And that extra 25 is definitely going to principal. Um, and then after a couple months, bumping it up to $150 a month or whatever the number is, you just get, you know, you get my drift, like put extra towards the principal. Or you can use a windfall, like an annual bonus or a holiday gift to chip away at the principal as well. And, and the holiday bonus or holiday gift that sometimes may be easier because you're not, it's not in your pocket yet, right? You're not used to spending that money. Um, and when we take money out of your pocket, it's a little harder because you're like, wait a minute, that was mine to spend. Um, whereas you're not used to having it in your pocket if it's money that just came as a, a annual bonus or a pay raise, something like that. Um, so once you have a handle on your own finances, however dawning that may be, uh, you can take the first step towards saving for your child's education. Now, if your child is a preteen, um, you know, still young, time is on your side. Many parents choose uh, a traditional savings account. Uh, this is a legitimate way to put aside college funds and contributing early and often can help. It's just kind of like the scene with the 401k. The earlier you get started, the better off you are. Um, however, with the savings accounts, uh, interest rates uh, can be low. Well, right now they're okay as far as savings rates. But the flip side of that is the growth can be slow because you're just getting interest. Um, so another option is a 529 college plan, which can allow for more growth potential than a savings account. These plans were specifically designed for college savings. And sadly, over half of parents are not aware of them. Uh, now, they're typically invested more aggressively while the beneficiary is young and more conservatively as the college draws near. Uh, and just know that it's similar to a, like a 401k menu where you have a list of funds that you can put it in inside the 529. And there's even probably some target date funds, you know, for when the college uh, college time gets a little closer. Um, but these are investments, so they will go up and down in value. You can lose money, you can grow your money, um, but do know that they go up and down in value. Um, so the earlier, like I said before, the earlier you're able to start contributing to the 529, the better. Even contributing a small amount on a consistent basis makes uh, or can make a huge difference. Um, those funds may grow over time um, thanks to compound interest and the power of the market. You kind of just make it like another bill for yourself, like your monthly mortgage. Uh, and sometimes it, it could feel like you're paying another mortgage depending on how much you're saving for the 529 plan. Um, but you just have it come out of your account every month on the same day. You know it's coming out. It's, it's on your bill spreadsheet. 
Um, and you're kind of paying yourself first um, to help save for your kids' college expenses. Um, now, withdrawals from 529s are tax-free as long as they're for used for qualified uh, education expenses, uh, which include not only college tuition, but also supplies, room and board, equipment, uh, vocational and technical training as well, and also uh, a limited amount of kindergarten through 12, uh, 12th grade public or private school tuition can be used out of the plan, uh, apprenticeship programs and fees, and of course, uh, with the recent tax law change, some student loan repayment, which is pretty cool. Now, the bottom line is they are highly flexible, effective savings tools. Uh, you will have to shop around for the best 529 plan for you because the tax advantages do vary uh, plan to plan and state to state. I'm lucky I'm in the state of Pennsylvania, so I can use any 529 plan and still get my tax benefits uh, for the, from the state of Pennsylvania. But um, my counterparts in other states are not so lucky. They may be required to use a specific 529 plan. And if that's the case, hey, you're still doing the 529 plan. The idea is that you're doing uh, something that's going to help you down the line and help your family. Now, you can re research different uh, plans online or work with a financial professional to find out which savings tools are best for you. Uh, so definitely take uh, take advantage of that opportunity. You know, Google can be your friend. Um, how about if your kid is a teenager? So even if you've missed out on saving during the early years, there's still ways to try and make cost uh, the cost of college a little bit more manageable for you and for your child. Remember, every little bit that you do can help. Uh, you can still open a 529 uh, plan even late in the game. When your child's over, most uh, older, most uh, 529 plans will suggest uh, conservative investments, but some plans do offer more aggressively, um, you know, uh, options, uh, no matter how close to college age your child is. In either case, there's still tax advantage accounts and worth considering. So that is one of the best things about them. They grow tax deferred. You take the money out um, without any federal taxes as, as long as they're used for the proper um, items. Now, investment returns, like I mentioned, they're not guaranteed. You can lose money by investing in a 529 plan. You can make money on a 529 plan. Just like know that you are invested in the stock market. So it goes up, it goes down. So some days those statements look great and other days, um, I've had a couple statements where I felt like somebody kicked me in the stomach, right? But I was just like, okay, wait a minute, this stinks. Oh, wait, the market's down. So my monthly contributions, I'm actually buying more shares than I normally would because essentially it's on sale. Um, and uh, eventually when the market goes up, uh, my statement's going to look a lot better. So, you know, sometimes you have to have those conversations with yourself, just like I do. Um, and um, know that, you know, depending on what age your child is, you know, it could be a long term uh, plan uh, if your child. Your know, child's closer to college, it's a, a tougher um, sticker shock to see uh, um, a volatile statement. So definitely have a conversation with somebody about that. Now, the year before your child heads off to college, you may um, complete or you actually should complete uh, something called a free application for federal student aid or FAFSA for short. And everyone talks. The reason they use FAFSA is because who wants to say all those words, right? But that's essentially what it is. You're applying for uh, federal student aid um, by filling out that form. Please note they changed the process this year. I did it uh, for my two boys who were in college. It actually was a little bit smoother um, of an application process. Um, but, you know, they're still trying to figure out things in the background. They're having some issues, but, you know, that's the same whenever a program changes, they have to figure everything out on the back side of it. But here's the question I get a lot, you know, hey, um, you know, I make a decent amount of money. I'm afraid that my kids won't get anything. Why should I bother, you know, or should I bother completing that FAFSA form? And my answer is yes. And parents, you know, I have parents that I, parent gurus that I go to, um, and I ask, you know, them, them, their experience. Um, so, you know, the reason I say yes is because you don't know for sure whether or not you're going to get something and maybe you won't, 
Um, but you wouldn't, the answer would have been no, had you not asked, right? So at least you're asking and that's by filling out that form. Also, um, when you, uh, like, say you're going to a private college, uh, like around here, Drexel or Villanova, they have a different additional form that you have to fill out, uh, for student aid. Um, and that sometimes you may get money from the school, um, but if you don't fill out the FAFSA or that form, you're not getting anything from the school. Um, so that's the reason you fill them out and you never know what you're going to get or not get. Um, you know, I, I am very, uh, surprised sometimes when people tell me what they did or didn't get. Um, but again, you just don't know unless you try. So the fact of, uh, filing window opens each year in the fall. It's best to apply as soon as possible. Um, you know, you're going to be filling out that student aid paperwork before your child has even decided on a school. Um, but regardless, some pools of money are limited and some funds are given on a first come first serve basis. So applying as soon as that filing window is open is beneficial. Um, I think at this point, most uh, people, especially if they have first timers going to college in the fall, they would have filled out the FAFSA by now. Um, people with returning kids, maybe not um, as diligent because we've been through it a couple of times, um, you know, but also you do want to get there it in as soon as possible um, because sometimes, like I said, it is first come first serve basis. And once that money is gone, it's gone. Finally, talk it out. Most parents expect to share the cost with their child through student debt, so you need to work together. In the years leading up to college, make sure to let your child know how much of their education will be paid with loans. Uh, this way, your child can start saving, um, pursuing some grant or scholarship opportunities, and they can focus on uh, his or her college to search uh, in schools where the price may be a little bit better. Um, student debt can be really, really shocking. Um, and helping your child understand what their financial status will be after college uh, can be helpful. Um, some more things to discuss with your uh, future college grad, uh, multiple questions that you can ask them, like uh, are your uh, child loans most likely to be federal or private? What are the associated interest rates? What's a credit score? Uh, how can your child build good credit? How will your child's uh, credit score impact his or her loan interest? What's a, what about the ability to refinance? Um, has your child considered work study program? Do any of his or her prospective students offer uh, or schools offer free room and board for resident assistance? So obviously they're not going to offer that for a freshman, but after you've been there for maybe a year or two, um, there are what we call RAs at colleges, resident assistants, and they either get free room and board or a very discounted room and board. And that, believe it or not, can add or help take away a big part of the expense for college. Um, so your children are working hard trying to balance school, homework, sports, uh, extracurriculars, and all the other challenges that come along with growing up, helping them understand what comes next by teaching them how loans work, what interest rates are and how student debt may impact their future could be helpful. Uh, college is a big dream, but it also has a big price tag attached to it. It's never too late to put a little extra money aside for your college um, fund, for your child's college fund. And the longer you have until he or she enrolls, the more opportunity you have to save and grow your money and handle all the other expenses as well. Because, you know, it's not just the tuition and the room and board, it's the you know, the parents spend money traveling to see these kids too. It's, you know, either flying or driving and then the hotels and eating out. Uh, there's a lot of other hidden expenses that uh, that we don't really talk about that maybe we should. So, you know, you may want to speak with your financial professional about, um, you know, college and the expenses of that. You may also use an online college savings calculator or resources and talk to your children about your plan um, you know, obviously working together can help them uh, make their uh, college dreams come true and hopefully without as much student debt um, and that debt not becoming a nightmare. Um, it's, it is uh, something that we're seeing with, um, you know, a lot of parents taking on 
uh, this debt as well. So it's not just the kids and the, the adults that are taking on the debt, they're getting a little closer to retirement, which makes it a little bit more difficult for retirement planning. So these are uh, conversations that you really do need to have. The other thing is that colleges um, do have, if you go uh, usually on their financial aid um, page or, you know, uh, welcoming page uh, for new incoming students, there is a calculator for the true cost of the college um, and an estimate there. And it is quite shocking when you do this. Um, so that would be something that I recommend to do. Um, the other thing is have the conversation with the kids about, okay, well, if you, you know, you've got accepted to three schools, here's the tuition, you know, we have three different types of tuitions from low, medium, and high. Um, and assuming, assuming you get the same similar financial aid package, what is your debt going to be on the other side of college? Um, and does your degree warrant that? Um, and what can you make at, in that degree once you are out of college? Is, is it going to be enough to pay these student loans down? So those are great conversations to have as well. So our call to action today, make sure that you're contributing to your retirement plan at work. Minimally do enough to get the match. Um, no matter how young or old your children are, some uh, start some form of college savings accounts, whether or not it's you know, a good old fashioned savings account or a 529 plan, do something that's going to help you and your child. And with that, I want to thank you for joining me. I'm again, Regina McCann Hess, president of Forge Wealth Management. Um, my website is forgewealth.com. You can find me on Facebook at Forge Wealth, Instagram at Forge Wealth Management and LinkedIn, Regina McCann Hess. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.